Hey everybody, welcome back to the Financial Freedom Show. My name is Rob Berger. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at leveraged ETFs. I've received countless questions about whether as long-term buy and hold investors, we should be putting our money in leveraged ETFs. So we're gonna talk about, talk about what they are, and we're gonna look at a very specific example, one leveraged ETF that has a ticker of TQQQ, and we're gonna look at that one because that's the one ETF by far that I've received more questions about. Now, if you're new to the show, uh, we talk about investing, uh, and specifically as it relates to retirement, both those that are trying to save up enough to retire someday, but also folks like me that are much closer to retirement or in retirement already. So if you're new to the channel, would love to have you subscribe. Also, I do a live Q&A every Thursday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern time and do my best to answer your questions. So would love to have you join the live Q&A. All right, enough chit chat. Let's get right to leveraged ETFs. And in concept, they're really quite simple. Uh, the typical leveraged ETF seeks to achieve uh, a return of either two times or in some cases three times an underlying index. So for example, uh, a leveraged ETF that's tracking the S&P 500 might try to achieve say two times uh, the S&P 500's return. So on a given day, if the S&P 500 is up uh, say 1%, uh, a leveraged ETF uh, would try to achieve a 2x or 2% return for that day. And it uses a number of uh, strategies to do that, including leverage and swaps, derivatives. Uh, and it can get for an average investor, myself included, quite frankly, uh, pretty complex uh, behind the scenes. But again, the concept is you know pretty straightforward. Now, they also have what are called inverse ETFs. And as the name suggests, they try to do the opposite. So a 2x inverse uh, ETF on the S&P 500, if the S&P 500 were up 1%, uh, it would at attempt to achieve a minus 2% return, which may, may seem a little odd. But if someone thinks the market's gonna go down and they're betting the market will go down, then an inverse ETF might be one strategy to play that prediction. Now, it's not the kind of strategy I would ever use, but there are many folks out there that do. Now, uh, just from a terminology perspective, these leveraged ETFs and inverse ETFs together can sometimes be referred to as geared uh, ETFs, geared funds, geared investing. So you may see that term from time to time. Now, again, the concept is simple. And uh, when you think about it uh, longer term, it may have some initial appeal. After all, you often hear that uh, the stock market, for the most part, goes up on a year by year basis. Certainly there are some years as we well know, when it can go down and go down uh, significantly. Uh, but for m most of the time, most years, the market goes up. And so one thought might be, well, look, if we can just hold on, right? If we can just handle the volatility, why not invest in a leveraged ETF? Sure, we'll have some tough years, there's no doubt. Uh, but if the stock market go goes up most years in the long term, uh, won't we be much, much better off? And that really is the argument that I hear from a lot of people when it comes to the uh, leveraged ETF we're gonna look at today, TQQQ. So what is that? Well, QQQ, that's the ticker, is uh, an indexed in ETF that simply tracks the NASDAQ 100. What does TQQQ do? Maybe we'll just call it TQQQ, that might be a little easier. Uh, it, it seeks to uh, return 3X, uh, the returns of the QQQ. Let me show it to you. Uh, on the screen. So here it is. This is a fund offered by ProShares. That's the name of the fund company. They offer a, a number of leveraged ETFs. And you can see it's TQQQ, which is the Ultra Pro QQQ. And we can see right here, it says in black and white, ProShares Ultra Pro QQQ seeks daily investment results before fees and expenses that correspond to three times the daily performance of the NASDAQ 100 index. Now, one thing I wanna point out, you notice they use the word daily twice. And if we come down to the longer description here, it says the leveraged ProShare ETF seeks a return that is 3X the return of its underlying benchmark for a single day. And they've even cut that in bold face. And you think, what's up with that? They seem to really be highlighting this daily thing. Is that is that significant? Well. It turns out it is very significant. In fact, ProShares fought off a securities class action lawsuit over this very issue, which I'm gonna show you. 
in just a minute. Before we get to it though, I'm going to show you why so many people are attracted to this ETF. If we put this ETF in Portfolio Visualizer, which is a tool that allows us uh, to look back at the performance of a fund, and you can see what we're doing, I'm assuming a $10,000 investment. I've put the dates from 1985 to 2021, uh, but we'll come back to those dates in a minute. And we've got the QQQ, which is the Invesco QQQ Trust, that's the NASDAQ 100. And here we've got the TQQQ, that's the ProShare fund we were just looking at, and we're gonna compare the two. Now, the first thing to note is that it's a ten, roughly a 10 year period. It starts in January, 2011. And that's because this particular ProShares fund, as you can see right here, launched in March, 2010. Leveraged ETFs were first introduced in 2006. This specific fund was introduced in March of 2010. And therefore the data that ProShares has begins in January, 2011. So fine, we've got roughly 10 or 11 years worth of data. And if we actually look at the results, you can see that a $10,000 investment in QQQ gave us, after the, the time period, roughly 11 years, about $73,000. But ProShares, look at that number, $810,000. Now, now you know why I get so many uh, emails from folks asking about this fund. That's a remarkable return over the last 10 years or so. Now, let me just read you a couple of the emails that I've received so you get a rough idea uh, of what folks are asking me. And um, the first one came in uh, from uh, a viewer named Sai, if I'm reading their name correctly. And Sai says, my question is about TQQQ. I read many articles online and research studies on how these leveraged ETFs may ruin one's portfolio and that they are not good for long-term investors. But when you look at the charts, you see some, something different. I know also all the math behind it. If you even check and compare TQQ, T triple Q with QQQ at Portfolio Visualizer, as we just did, he, he writes, you can clearly see how TQQQ outperformed QQQ. Would you please explain why this is not a good idea to dedicate five or 10% of a portfolio to TQQQ? Well, that's what we're going to try to do today. I will say that you can dedicate a small percentage of a portfolio to just about any risky investment and probably not, you know, ruin your overall portfolio. But still, is TQQQ worth the risk? Now, let's go back to Portfolio Visualizer for just a second. I want to just point out a few things. Obviously, we see the final balance, which is why this particular ETF is so attractive to so many people. We can see that its compound annual growth rate was 50% over this time per period compared to 20% uh, for the Invesco QQQ Trust. Of course, over a 10-year period, even 20% is an incredible compound annual growth rate, but 50% is just otherworldly. Now, we know that there's, they're risky. The standard deviation is 50, which is huge. And in fact, we can see uh, the max drawdown for TQQQ during this period was almost 50%. And if we hover over this little information icon, we can see that it dropped, listen to this, it dropped 50% in just one month from February 2020. Of course, we know what happened then. That was sort of the start of COVID to March 2020. In one month, it dropped 50%. And so the question is, uh, why did it drop so much? How is that possible? Did the QQQ drop a third of that? And this is, if you take nothing else from this video, this is the really where we begin to see the one thing you need to understand about a leveraged ETF and why ProShares kept highlighting in their documentation that we saw just a minute ago daily. Leveraged ETFs are designed to uh, track 2x or 3x typically an underlying index on a daily basis not an annual basis a daily basis and that becomes very very significant let me show you why first of all this is pro shares um, a documentation a different page on their website and i'm highlighting a section uh, of of their disclosures it says to maintain their investment objectives, geared funds, remember that could be an inverse fund or a leveraged fund, rebalance their exposure to the underlying benchmarks each day 
by trimming or adding to their positions. As a result of daily fund rebalancing, an investor holding a geared fund longer term is unlikely to continue to receive the funds multiple the funds multiple times the benchmarks returned. Now, I'm going to show you specific examples of this, but it's something that ProShares itself, they're the seller of this ETF, stresses over and over and over again. You can't look at the annual performance of the underlying index. In this case, we're looking at the NASDAQ 100 through QQQ and say, all right, with TQQQ, I'll simply get three times that amount. It doesn't work that way. And in fact, uh, shortly after ETFs, uh, leveraged ETFs came out, there was a class action lawsuit filed against ProShares over this very issue. As a retired attorney, I can't help but dive into these issues. Let's take a very, very quick look. Here is one of them. It was filed in the United States District Court for the uh, Southern District of New York. This is a federal court uh, uh, in Manhattan. This is where many uh, securities class actions are filed. And it was against ProShares. I won't go into the, the nitty gritty of this lawsuit, but I will just point out early in the allegations, this is a, a document the plaintiff would file explaining why they're suing ProShares. And they point out here, they say, Pro, in this case, it was against uh, ultra and ultra short ETFs. And the point that they make uh, in their uh, allegations, uh, somewhat, uh, I think, ironically, is that these funds did not, on, an, on a longer term basis, track the index either 2x or 3x or inverse. And they actually went into the numbers in this lawsuit to say, look, things didn't work out the way the plaintiff thought they would. And they, give, they give specific examples. They say, uh, for example, in a specific fund, fell 37% over the course of a year, in this case, 2008, they claimed investors were misled that the fund should have appreciated by over 74% during this period, right? Again, using this 2X or 3X, in, in this case, it was an inverse fund, applied to the annual returns. I can tell you that these class action lawsuits were eventually dismissed by the judge saying, no, no, pro share, shares clearly uh, disclosed that these funds reset on a daily basis. Uh, and so you can't simply take the 2X or 3X and multiply it by the annual results. And if that weren't enough, we have the SEC coming in. This was during the same time period, August 2009, when that lawsuit was filed. I don't think there's any necessarily any relationship, but these, uh, this was an SEC article, and I'll leave links to, to this uh, below the video. And in this article, they give very specific real-life examples. They don't identify the ETF, but here's, for example, they say, hey, between December 1 and, uh, of 2008 and April 30th, 2009, a particular index gained 2%. However, a leveraged ETF seeking to deliver twice the index's daily return fell by 6%. And they give another example here. And here they point out, and I won't read the whole paragraph, but they say, look, because this resets daily, even over the course of two days, in this case, a, a, a leveraged fund designed to earn 2x the ETF can deviate significantly from 2x the underlying fund. And that was over just a two-day period. All right. I know I've thrown a lot at you. Let's get back to TQQQ, and I'm going to show you why we shouldn't rely on its last 10 years of performance to decide whether uh, TQQQ is, right, is the right investment for us. And at first, that may seem a bit odd. You might say, well, Rob, I don't know, 10 years performance seems like a pretty good amount of time to judge a fund. I don't believe so. Not in this case. And I'm going to show you why. We're going to go back to Portfolio Visualizer. Initially, all I did was show you the numbers. And of course, when you look at that $810,000 return on a $10,000 investment over 10 years, boy, that's pretty hard to ignore. But let's take a look at the actual annual returns. Here we are. The blue are the QQQ uh, returns on a yearly basis, and the, the red is the ProShares Ultra Pro QQQ, and it goes from 2011 to 2021. What do you notice about the returns? Well, the thing that jumps out at me is that other than uh, two years, they're all positive. And of course, we know this, right? We know that the stock market as a whole has been on an incredible run over the last decade. 
uh, tech companies in particular have been on a, a remarkable, uh, I would say, unprecedented run uh, over the last uh, 10 years. And, um, and so it's no uh, surprise that both the QQQ and TQQQ have done extraordinarily well. But there's some things we can draw from this uh, first. The first is uh, what the SEC warns us of, what ProShares itself warns us of, is that uh, in the, the, the 3X fund will not 3X the QQQ on an annual basis. And we can see that sometimes for the better, right? I mean, it will take 2013, uh, QQQ returned 36%. Well, uh, ProShares didn't return 3x, actually did better, returned 140% in that one year. Uh, so there's just one example. In other cases, it returned on an annual basis a lot less than 3x. Here, QQQ returned, and I don't know quite how well you can see the actual number, but it returned about 7%. ProShares was up, but it wasn't up 21%. It was up a little over 11%. But the year I really want to show you is 2018. We look at 2018 and we think, well, wait a minute, where's the blue bar? What did QQQ do that year? It doesn't seem to have registered. But if we hover over it, we can see, no, it's there. It just was flat. QQQ returned a minus 0.12%. It wasn't enough for the blue bar to even be visible in Portfolio Visualizer. But look at ProShares. It lost almost 20%. That is significantly more than 3x uh, the QQQ, which underscores uh, the significance of this daily reset. You cannot apply, and I'll repeat, you cannot apply the annual returns of an underlying index to, an, to a leveraged ETF. They, there's virtually no relationship whatsoever between the two. In fact, as the SEC pointed out, you can have a positive return of the underlying index and a negative return with, an, with a leveraged ETF. And we actually see that in 2011. QQQ returned roughly 3.5%, while ProShares lost 8%. Now, at this point, you may be saying, Rob, that's great. Appreciate all your hard work here. But you're still not convincing me uh, that TQQQ is, is a, a risky investment that I should avoid. Well. Here's the real issue with a leveraged ETF, in this case, TQQQ. And uh, to see it, we need more data, data that we don't have because TQQQ has only existed during a time period when the NASDAQ 100 has performed exceptionally well. So let's go back in time. To do that, we need to get rid of uh, TQQQ in the data so we can look at more years. We're going to analyze just the QQQ. Now remember, it had a 20% compounded annual growth rate when we were looking at 2011 to 2021. Removing TQQQ, however, gives us more data. Now we can go all the way back to January 2000. And notice the compound annual growth rate drops significantly. I mean, 7% is certainly not uh, terrible, uh, but not what I think many have come to expect over more recent years, and we can see why when we look at the annual returns. What we now see are 2000 to 2002, look at this, it lost 36%, lost 33%, lost 37%. Yeah, those were some rough years for tech stocks. Of course, that was the tech bubble that burst, right? But even 2008, look at that, it lost 41%. Here's the thing I want to stress for those folks that are considering an investment in TQQQ. That fund has never existed during years like what you're seeing on the screen, never. And if you were to invest in the TQQQ during those years, we, we can't simply triple that loss and say that's what would happen with the TQQQ. We know that, right, because it resets on a daily basis. But I think we can conclude that during years like that, the returns for TQQQ would be devastating. And in fact, I would argue could, could potentially completely wipe out your investment. That's the thing that I think you need to understand uh, before investing in any leveraged uh, ETF. If the underlying index experiences years like we're seeing here for QQQ 2000 to 2002 or 2008, uh, it could easily wipe out uh, an investment entirely, potentially, or certainly a, a large, large portion of it. And that's what investors uh, need to be prepared for 
we can't get comfortable simply because of the last 10 years, as long as that time period is, has done very well for, in this case, ProShares uh, TQQQ, because during that time period, the underlying index has performed exceptionally well. That won't always be the case. So at the end of the day, could you put some small percentage in a leveraged ETF? You could. Uh, you just need to be, understand that they're not designed to be used that way. They're not designed to be held uh, by long-term buy and hold investors. They're generally used for active daily traders, maybe for some hedging strategies uh, uh, potentially, but they're not really designed to be uh, bought and held for long periods of time. The SEC has warned us about that. ProShares itself has warned us about that. So don't, I guess the point I'm trying to make is don't fall in love with the last decade of performance. We need to see how uh, an investment like TQQQ would perform when the underlying index gets walloped, and it will, we just don't know when. I guess it's buyer beware. Well, I hope you found uh, the video helpful, if at least informative. I'll leave links to uh, the resources I've mentioned below the video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out any way I can. Until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.